So customer choice is generally the easiest for founders, investors, mentors, advisors, and more to discuss and conceptualize. So it should be fairly easy for us to discuss today. Uh, we'll start by looking at a product you may remember from the textbook or class discussions, uh, and it's called Soylent. Now this is a brand of meal replacement products that was developed by Rob Reinhardt in 2013. And like any other founder, after coming up with the initial idea and prototypes for his product, Reinhardt would have to determine an appropriate beachhead market to go ahead and target. So today, we'll go through an exercise from Reinhardt's perspective to brainstorm some potential beachhead markets for Soylent. First, we'll start by considering the product's inherent value. And in this section, our goal is to just go ahead and identify and prioritize a few beachhead customers that Soylent can create value for. One potential beachhead market that stands out to me is athletes. And that's because this product could deliver value to pre-existing users by acting as a convenient, nutritional, and cost-effective meal replacement option. You know, Reinhardt really did emphasize that Soylent has a medley of nutritional benefits, and these could prove to be advantageous for athletes. So Soylent could be something similar to pre-existing health or protein options on the market, but this product's convenient preparation and affordable cost could create unparalleled value for consumers that maybe distinguishes it from competitors. So now that we've jotted down our first example, uh, our next step would be to just go ahead and go through that same line of reasoning for five more potential beachhead customers. And just briefly, some examples that we thought someone that could create value for were office workers, campers and hikers, um, food relief programs, elderly individuals, uh, and the military. So I challenge you to think about how Soylent creates value for each of those examples and maybe a few of your own ideas. And the key to this section is to really recognize that despite only having one product or technology, this same product, service, or technology creates value or can create value for multiple different potential customers across a number of markets. So now moving forward, our next step is to prioritize our top four potential customers based off of relative value creation and market size. So here you would go through all six of your choices from above and really select four based off of some research uh, and insights that provide the total available market that's desirable for you. You know, and this is going to be a market that is generally not too expensive to break into, but large enough for you to go ahead and capture value. For our purposes, we'll go ahead and stick with athletes and put them in our A position because this beachhead has a total available market of about $40 billion and the market is relatively accessible and abundant um, in customers. And that being said, it's fairly feasible and cost effective to break into because we have plenty of healthy meal alternatives on the rise and already in the market. So Soylent could be the next low cost protein shake or meal alternative to enter the market. So now your next step would be to go ahead and of the remaining five choices, select options that would fit into the B, C, and D positions based off of the total available market and how easy it is to essentially break into that market and capture value. So once that's been completed, we can go ahead and move on to our second page here uh, where we'll be exploring strategic value. And here, our goal is to consider the product's strategic value by ranking beachhead alternatives with respect to an ability to reach a broader mainstream market and provide learning opportunities. So that being said, the left side is kind of determining our follow-on market strategy, and the right side is gauging learning opportunities. So let's get started. So starting on the left side, if we stick with our example of athletes as a potential beachhead, um, we'll just go ahead for our purposes and assume that the follow-on market that we want to reach is the mainstream consumer market. We want Soylent to be in every home in the United States. And if that is the case, then we could just go ahead and say that athletes would be a great opportunity to reach a wider consumer market because we know that athletes and fitness personalities tend to have a higher public presence. And as a result, they're a good option if you're looking to reach a large, somewhat health-conscious consumer market. Um, and generally, that health-conscious consumer market does lead to a larger mainstream consumer market. And if we jump over to gauging learning opportunities, uh, it's pretty clear that athletes and the fitness crowd 
will provide ample learning opportunity because this tends to be a market that is connected online and in person. So there's high willingness to give um, feedback and good opportunity for virtual and in-person learning about really the product's performance um, and market demand. So for our purposes, athletes remain in the A position on both sides. But once you go through this, you may find that in moving from section one to section two, some things may shift around based off of potential for learning or follow on market. And once we've completed that analysis for all four of our potential beachheads at this point, we'll go ahead and move down to the bottom of the page where it tells us to eliminate one potential beachhead before moving forward. And we have you narrow down your four choices to three here because moving forward to our third and final step or page, um, we'll be looking at viable candidates um, and we'll be narrowing our choices and concerning further means of investigation. So essentially in this section, our goal is to go ahead and answer the question of how we can conduct commitment-free learning about each remaining potential beachhead. So for our example, uh, the athletes, Maybe that means researching athletic health needs and determining if our soilant formula actually needs to be modified or improved. Um, and we can determine that by reviewing industry reports. We can do interviews with sports physiologists and nutritionists. Um, and we can also go ahead and conduct free sampling at sports clubs and gyms to see if uh, our customers are enjoying our product and see how the market responds to our product. And conducting that commitment-free learning can really look different depending on what industry you decide to target or go into. So our goal here is to really determine how difficult it will be to receive feedback and conduct experiments within all of our beachhead markets. And after going through that line of reasoning for the three remaining potential beachheads, uh, you've completed the exercise and having done this, our hope is that you have a more clear picture of some of the potential beachheads that Reinhardt could have chosen. And as you go through this document, it's important to remember that the ultimate goal is to distill our broad range of ideas for potential beachheads into only a few concrete steps and actionables, like what we've concluded with here um, on the third page of the document. Um, and we've gone through this customer choice process fairly quickly, so you can expect it to take a lot more time and research won't apply to a real potential venture. So nonetheless, it's so important to take your time when making these decisions because customer choice really does matter. So that concludes the customer choice section of this workbook, um, and I hope that helps you with your assignment.